Every backpacker has the same problem. Last year, I came across an inexpensive piece of gear that solves that issue. It turns out the guy behind it lives just down the hill from me. So we decided to meet up for a backpacking trip in one of Arizona's most rugged deserts. Ready for adventure? I am ready. Sweet. So I just met up with Eric Flotman. He's the owner of Flip Fuel. And uh, we're in his backyard down here in Phoenix. This is the Superstition Mountains. Just right outside out of the out of the big city. Hard to believe that this place is where it is. But uh, we're coming up over the saddle. There's just so many wild features out here. This rock and this landscape is pretty otherworldly. Gonna see one of the iconic spots of Arizona and uh, kind of underrated. Like if you're local to Phoenix, you know about it. But if you're outside of Phoenix, you probably have no idea that this pocket of rugged mountains exists at all. So I'm excited to show you about it. Excited to backpack with my new buddy, Eric over here. He's a good guy, I trust him. He's got the good name, so he's trustworthy. And uh, we're gonna go have some fun. Let's get after it. Um, you gonna drink that? I am, I'm oh, drinking it right now. That's Putting that filter to the tap. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Actually, probably the best water in Phoenix. Definitely better than the Phoenix water. Yeah, <laughs> better than the tap water, that's for sure. Oh, this is cool. Not bad, not bad. So, Weaver's Needle, that's a cool spot. So, where are we? We're going to be going back behind it. So, yeah, so we'll drop off of this kind of stick onto the side of this face here. Yeah. And cruise back. But yeah, we'll be on the far side of it, down, you know, a fair amount lower than this. Yeah. And when we get to where we're going. Eric and I just made it up over the saddle here, which gives us a beautiful view of the Weaver's Needle and beyond into the superstitions. So the Weaver's Needle is kind of one of the iconic mountains, especially for the Phoenix area and a very popular hike to get to this point. But now we're leaving behind the well-trodden path and heading off deeper into the wild spaces here. I'm gonna go find some lonely campsites. Eric and I are dropping down into the back side of the saddle here, and it's nice to see there's some actual water running. We're carrying a ton of water just in case we uh, don't really find much at camp. It's one of the unique elements of desert backpacking. So I've been hauling about five liters of water throughout the day, but I am, we're both really encouraged by seeing how much water is back here. And uh, this is a section of the mountains I've never seen before. It's wild to see these boulders that are just so strange and kind of balancing rocks and fascinating landscape back here. So really excited for the next couple of days of being out here and seeing the new side of the superstitions. This is crazy. I was out here in December and none of this water was here. There was pockets, puddles, but we've got a fully flowing creek here right now. 
That's awesome. That's why, awesome. why did you make me carry all that water? Same, right? I was uh, kidding. I actually only carried two liters myself. Oh, you <laughs> play. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, that makes me happy. I love seeing that much water. Ooh, a big sight. Yeah, we slept 12 here with the scouts. Nice. Nice work, Eric. Well done. Well done yourself. That was great. Now for a snack. You bring a chair? Yes, sir. Nice. These old bones need a chair. I know. I've hit that point in my life, too. Whew, good day out there. Absolutely. This was awesome. So Eric and I have made it to camp here, and uh, I just set up my Durston Pro, you guys have seen the, the X-Mid Pro, you guys have seen me use this tent quite a bit. And as, uh, as Eric was setting up his tent here, I noticed he's got the original X-Mid. So I thought I'd introduce Eric a little bit more. And uh, Eric, do you mind doing like a, can you, sh can you show us like your palace? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. <laughs> I got one of the early model X-Mids uh, back when Dan was still selling them on Mass Drop. Um, it's the one person, it's kind of the original design. I got it back in 2019. Um, honestly, since I started carrying it, I haven't carried anything else. Um, some of my favorite things about it are that the inner net uh, clips out at the top and in the four corners so I can remove it entirely and still have it pitched, uh, which is great for a rainy day in camp if I need to duck it into a spot but I'm not trying to go to bed. Um, I've actually fit three people sitting and playing cards under this uh, canopy. Um, but then I can also have, you know, the full bug net. Um, it also has the opportunity to set it up as net only um, and, and forego the rain fly, which is great. Um, it's super light, fits in my pack, get to reuse the trekking pole so I'm not carrying a second set of poles. Um, it really checks all my boxes. Um, it's, it's really a fantastic tent. Dan's done a fantastic job with it. Do you, because you got the, like, this is like one of the originals and you were one of the first on board with Dan. Do you consider yourself the original influencer? The original influencer that would be a far cry for me but uh the seven people that have seen me with this tent have probably been influenced because i know at least a couple of them bought their own <laughs> nice <laughs> well so uh yeah so you know dan durston's come a long way but it's really cool to see the original because i've never i've only seen like the x-men pro and the i think the one previous version to that so this is pretty cool and uh do you care? Can I see what's yeah, inside? Me. Do you want to do you want to pop around the other side and, and do a little show it off? I'm curious. So, Eric, you are a scout master. Yes, sir. So uh, you spend a few days a year. We out, try to. We outside. try to get the scouts out at least once a month. Uh, I bring a Z pad because I'm always terrified that yeah. my inflatable is going to fail me. Do you mind opening that up? Yes, uh, I'm a little bit nervous myself because I don't have one. <laughs> um, yeah, so I've never had an inflatable fail on me yet, but I've been in camps when they have, and yeah. uh, that's not a pretty sight, so I've been carrying that. Um, I got my quilt on Mass Drop as well, so it's a, an early model quilt. It's I think I got it in 17 or 18. Uh, it's 20 degree rated. Uh, it's a Mass Drop brand, fairly basic model. It snaps at the top, cinches at the bottom. Yeah. Um, then straps around the back. Uh, I'm a giant fan of the quilt uh, for the weight and and for me bulk uh, that you lose by not carrying a sleeping bag. I find them very comfortable. Uh, I also don't like how constricting a sleeping bag is. Uh, yeah. So the quilt for me is the way to go. Um, I'm a little bit of a luxe camper. I bring two pillows. Whoa. Hey. Um, so that's that's a, that's a luxury item I like to carry. Nice. Um, <laughs> And yeah, that's kind of my my basic setup. As you know, as far as the tent is concerned, um, I like the small footprint of this one. Yeah. Uh, sometimes coming out here into the desert, you kind of have to squeeze into some smaller spots. Um, I do have the two P version of uh, the Durston tent, and I love it. Uh, but when I'm coming out here, I tend to bring the smaller one, uh, just because I've had some awkward pitches um, in some weird backcountry spots where uh, the one person tent just fits in better. I, I did notice you've got. Uh, is this an old thermarest too? Or so what, this what is, is yes, this is the Thermarest, uh, what's the X-Therm, um, the light version of that, but I upgraded to the wide. Uh, the regular light version packs down to just barely bigger than a 
soda can it feels like but yeah. for me um i feel like my uh, body parts are hanging off of the sides of it so i like the the wider one and i spring again for that that luxury item um i find when i'm having the conversation with scouts and their parents about you know gearing up for backpacking trips um i find i'm informing a lot of them about the existence of quilts and so i'm, I'm really singing this song quite a bit about yeah. you know cutting weight and and really when it, when you're in a scouting age cutting bulk um, is a big deal because you're carrying often a smaller pack that fits a smaller body, so you don't have the real estate uh, to stuff in a full size 20 degree bag. Um, you know, some of the advice I give to those parents is uh, definitely a 20 degree bag is a way to go. Uh, that gets you through, you know, the cooler seasons. Um, I've gotten this rig in Glacier National Park down to measured uh, 23 degrees on an overnight um, and been warm as toast. <laughs> um, again, love the tent. Um, yeah, these are, these are probably my, my favorite pieces of gear, the, the, the combination of these. Here, let's step outside for a second. I love that you've been kind of an ambassador for the scouts to, uh, to, you know, cut bulk and weight and have, you know, teach, teach these young, uh, individuals right off the bat, the, the ways of lightweight backpacking and getting out here and doing some awesome things. So something you might not know about Eric, I did mention it earlier in the video, but Eric is the founder, owner of his own gear company. It's actually one of my favorite pieces of gear that I've come across in the last year. Do you mind showing us what not it is? Not at all, not at all. So I'm the founder of Flip Fuel. And if you haven't heard of Flip Fuel, basically it's a way to transfer fuel between backpacking fuel canisters. So the ubiquitous problem that uh, every backpacker that I know has come across is you take a canister out on the trail, uh, you use some of the fuel out of it, you get it home. They're almost never empty. There's a little bit remnant in the bottom. Next trip comes along and you're saying, well, I don't wanna carry this half empty canister cause that's gonna run out. Uh, and I don't wanna carry two canisters. So this one's gonna go in a cardboard box and I'm gonna carry a new canister. Every backpacker I know has a box full of these in their garage at home. Uh, enter Flip Fuel. Flip Fuel allows us to move fuel between these canisters so we can take a partial canister and another partial canister and combine the fuel into one. Um, it's a very basic principle. You basically warm uh, the sending canister, set it in a, in a sunny spot. You cool the receiving canister, put it in a cold creek, put it in your freezer at home, uh, strap them together, warm on top, cool on the bottom, and then just open the valve and the fuel transfers from one to the other. Uh, once the fuel is transferred, you can take the end Empty, you can poke a hole in it, uh, you can throw that thing in the recycling bin and eliminate your box of fuel and actually get to use all of the fuel that you've paid for. Nice. Where can people find this now? So yeah, so as of this year, we are now available in 127 doors at REI, uh, as well as at REI.com. So here in the United States, we're pretty uh, spread out. You can also go to flipfuel.co um, and get it there if you prefer to buy directly from the people that brought it to you. You'd probably prefer that too. I could go either way. <laughs> you just want to get get it in the hands of the people. I, really, I, we started down this path because we wanted to solve this problem. And so, if you're if you're using this and you can get rid of that box and get these uh, canisters recycled and back into the the system, um, that's all the boxes I needed to get checked. I love that, and it's really cool to get a chance to just talk with the guy behind this product because I've genuinely been a big fan of this since I got turned on to it like uh, eight or nine months ago. So this is cool and we're gonna keep backpacking together and we'll probably keep talking some gear, so keep following along. Do those actually get recycled? They sure do. That's cool. Uh, it's a cate food. Oh yeah, ladies from Mexico. I have. I... Uh, chilaquiles are pretty, pretty legit. Those chilaquiles are so good. Yeah. Well, cheers, cheers. to a uh, good day on the trail. Hell yeah. Great to hike with you. Yeah, likewise. Nice to meet you. Thank you. You too.
Eric and I have had a nice little evening out here chatting and stargazing. And uh, I think it's time to turn in for the night. See you in the morning. I think I planted the idea that you were going to have some Possible. sort of uh, intense dreaming situation. Possible. It's part of my mind control. I mean, that's the that's the inception part. Right? Yeah, exactly. But uh, I think the. I think some of the mapping stuff is, is better on Bowman. Okay. I don't, I don't use the mapping function. Still floored at how much water we've seen. That was amazing. How much grass is here? It's totally surprising. I kind of thought there'd be more wildflowers, like some of them emerging. So one thing I'm learning about Eric here is that he's a bit of a foodie. What do you got there? So I've got a can of sardines with chili oil in them, a pack of, of artichokes, artichoke hearts, a bit of cheese, some good old fashioned club crackers. Woo, you gourmet for backpacking. <laughs> <laughs> mm, I'll just eat my cliff bar. Eric and I have got a nice little camp in here. We're at the base of one of these springs. So we got these tall sycamore trees and some like scrubby oak and stuff like that that we're kind of camping under. Really lovely, sun's just going down. Beautiful night here. We're about to get some dinner going. And uh, yeah, might do some stargazing tonight. I think that might be fun. But let's make dinner. What do you got for dinner tonight? Skirka beans. Skirka beans? Night two, electric boogaloo. Show me what you got. So this is the uh, Andrew Skirka, Skirka beans recipe. Basically in the pouch, I've got instant rice, instant um, refried beans, and taco seasoning. Mm. And after we get that all rehydrated and soupy, we'll add in some Fritos, a little bit of cheese and hot sauce of choice. Ooh. This happens to be uh, Chipotle Cholula. Nice. You go hard in the paint when it comes to food. I try. It gives you something to do while you're out here. Yeah. It's always fun to uh, play around with something, try something new. Um, we bring a lot of freeze dried food in here as well from time to time, but uh, it is always fun to play around with something. Uh, kind of off the beaten path. Uh, the beef you had for breakfast, is it like ground or like what kind of shape is the beef in? <laughs> Shredded? <laughs> Roundish beef? Round? Yeah, no, it's it's uh, it's ground beef. <laughs> ground? Gotcha. <laughs> the shape. What shape is your beef? <laughs> Sounds like a very personal question. <laughs> yeah. So Glacier National Park, uh, Hole in the Wall Falls. Ooh. They've got a privy there that is extended out. It's it's open air, not in, enclosed. 
um, but it's extended out so far over the overlook and that hole in the wall falls, you're really looking down on the river basin really? and the canyon below. And it's extended so far out over that uh, with such an unobstructed view <laughs> that there's literally a conveyor belt that goes from under the seat to the tank that's you know yards behind you because they couldn't put the tank in that far out towards the edge wow. so once you're finished you have to use your foot to pump the lever to <laughs> to access the tank mm. and so that's pretty unbelievable just okay. looking out over that expanse of space that's that's pretty dang cool and the other one is probably in the enchantments in washington Eric and I got an early start this morning. Got up just as dawn was breaking. Thought it's really nice to see this desert in some soft morning light. Today we'll be finishing up the trail and getting out of here. the right time of year to be out here in another month this is going to be baking hot probably all the water is going to be gone and it's going to be a very different place out here but for now i'm drinking it in well guys we did it we're back at the trailhead eric this was an awesome time Thanks Absolutely. for uh, luring me out here. You bet, thank you for coming with. It's been a pleasure. Let's definitely do one again sometime. Absolutely. If you have any questions, uh, hit me up in the comments below. We'd love to help answer any questions, especially if you're interested in getting out and into this area. And big shout out and thanks to Eric with Flip Fuel. And if you're unfamiliar with Flip Fuel, please go check them out. I'll have the link below. And uh, awesome little product, super cool device, and it's well worth any backpacker out there checking out. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Eric Hansen, I'll see you later. Thanks, Eric. See you, everybody.